Penn State and Marquette in this one. Penn State, really a 500 team in the Big Ten, made, a, made up a lot of ground. They could really stretch this season by getting to the final. Bruce Parkhill's done an outstanding job of just getting this team ready to play and into the conference. Only a couple years into the Big Ten, this would be a big jump for Penn State, not because they're losing Amici this year, but recruiting, building it. And when they get their new field house, once Joe Paterno loosens up that budget, <laughs> then they will become, I think, a force in the Big Ten. Marquette. No slouch. They know how to play, and they wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. Yeah, Marquette is a squad that actually had a pretty good season, had, had a couple of upsets along the way, then just stumbled a bit late. Especially in a conference tournament when Cincinnati got hot. The conference tournament was in Milwaukee. You got to win when you're at home in your own backyard like Cincinnati did last year. No, Cincinnati walked right through, stole the bid away from Marquette, and made it to the NCAA playoff. Yeah, here's Marquette getting a shot at the NIT championship. Yeah, you think about Marquette, actually. The final game of the season, which was at home against Memphis State, they win that game. Memphis State goes to the Sweet 16. It's amazing what Memphis... They beat Memphis State by 20 at home. The next thing you know, Memphis State is, like, ready for anybody, including Arkansas. Didn't happen. All right, coming up next, that's Penn State against Marquette. The second half of our double right here. Which team is going to join Virginia Tech in the NIT championship? <laughs> A basketball lead of 20 for the Hurricanes. Oh. From down 20 to a six point win. 62 to 56, Nittany Lions. A, three a wild three point attempt. The Wise is there for the follow, and that is the winner. And a steal by McCoy, three. Aggie by themselves and Walker stands at home. Sky Walker. Trains the middle, good cut it to one, goes all the way. Oh, Ray Ray dumps it in. Lingerie, pick him up. Call the cleaning lady. Three seconds to go. Yes! Travis Jackson! Down a point five, four. Is it going to be enough time? He steps back on foul. A foul on Tony Miller with two seconds to go. He didn't get it. Rebound the castle. Overtime here in Milwaukee. Four point game. Knocked away Miller and Mike Kent go to New York. Here's Ephraim. Score the goal with four seconds to go. wants to answer, cannot do it. The freshman, Pete Lasicki, with a three in the waiting moments to send Penn State to the NIT Final Four. Stripped away by Good. And now, Watlington comes up ahead to Good. Oh, that was plenty good. Today's the day to see your Toyota dealer and experience the luxury of Avalon. And right now, there's a wide selection starting at only $22,758. Experience the all-new Avalon. Hey, Chi-Chi, got room for a Forza? Sure, and then some. Take advantage of Toyota Previa's special lease program. Imagine a Previa with lots of options for only $2.99 a month. It's Toyota's Today's the Day Spring Sales Event, so hurry. Hey, there's Chi-Chi. Red Dog Beer. Red Dog. It's not ice brewed, fire brewed, and it's not some nursing sipping red. It's just genuinely good beer. Okay, there is one thing unusual about Red Dog. It's unusually easy to drink because it's bold yet smooth because it's made with the finest natural ingredients. Are you gonna like Red Dog? Yeah, we think so. But hey, it's your call. <laughs> Look inside today's PCs. You'll find something pretty amazing. The Intel Pentium processor. It gives PC software more life, more action, more energy. So if you want your PC software to really move, 
Make sure your PC has the Intel Pentium processor. Four basketball teams dribbled their way to New York City trying to fulfill their hoop dreams. And tonight, they're still looking for one team already in the championship as the Hokies of Virginia Tech have advanced. They'll meet the winner of our second matchup of the night as Penn State and Marquette get set to do battle. Second semifinal of the night in the National Invitation Tournament. A couple of 20-win clubs, the Golden Eagles of Marquette, the Nittany Lions of Penn State. And we welcome you back to New York City and Madison Square Garden, everybody. Brad Nessler, Bill Raftery. Raft, these teams have pretty good histories in the NIT. Well, Al McGuire, 25 years ago, the championship for Marquette. And Penn State's been in it five times, so they're used to the atmosphere. Well, when we started the night with the big games and four big guys, we took a look in the first matchup. Craig Wise certainly delivered a 32-point night sensational his final performance but ace custis another double double at 18 and 10 and now two more guys line it up inside tonight right well john mh is solid performer all during his career kept getting better and down low pulls off well able to rebound and complete in tough traffic very strong down on the block countering amal mccaskill st joseph's Isaiah Thomas is high school in Chicago. When he plays well, I think this team is a tough out. He's got to go to the goal and not away. Be strong on the day. All right. Hoop dreams is sort of the theme of the night, I guess, if you will, on an Academy Award night. And Will Gates was one of the stars of that documentary. He may only be a sixth man, but his dreams continue. His team plays Penn State when we come back. Eight beautiful models, one exotic island, one hot video. It's hot, real hot. It's the making of the 1995 Sport Magazine swimsuit issue. Video cameras take you behind the scenes to show you how this issue comes to life. And you'll meet the eight models up close. Order yours now. Call 1-800-717-ESPN, $12.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. This is me five years ago when I joined Pound Pinchers. And this is me now. For permanent fat loss, diets don't work. You need to build muscle. Before. <coughs> after. And the best way to do that is with the Soloflex Rocket. No matter what shape you're in, you can rock your way to a slimmer figure and more muscle. So get on the rocket today and get on the road to permanent fat loss. The Soloflex Rocket. Call now for a free brochure and video. Hey, baby, let's find out what the pros think of the new Adidas basketball shoes. First up is the real high riser, Stacy Orton. Well, Dick. Slam Jam Bam, baby, and over here's T.T. Beard, that lift shrimp. They really helped me. They yeah. helped you shoot the rock. And here's Diaper Dandy, Jalen Rose, and his fast break low. Well, I and think finally, that here's the human eraser, the Kevin Matumbo. They're very light, and they look good on my feet. He's 7'2". He could talk as long as he wants. Off. Isn't it just like Delta to design a stylish faucet that's practical too? Give me that. So it's long enough to reach today's double <laughs> and even triple sinks. Delta, the way water is brought to life. Need a towel? ESPN's presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Canon, a world leader in office equipment. Back at Madison Square Garden, 58 NIT, second semifinal matchup as it's Marquette and Penn State. Let's meet the starting lineup for Bruce Park Hill and his Nittany Lions. The Wolverine starting lineup looks like this. Earl and Williams in the backcourt. Glenn Secunda, the transfer from Syracuse, has got to be a little bit bigger for him tonight. Carlton and Amici round out the Penn State front line. For Mike Dean, who was here in the NIT semis last year with a different club, his first year for the Golden Eagles, his head man at Tony Miller, one of the top assist men in the entire country. 
seven and a half assists a game with Peeper also in the backcourt. Eford Abraham and McCaskill's a big guy up front that Raph spoke of. There's John Amici. And he's set to match it up with Amal McCaskill. Our officials, Mike Kitts, Rich Sanfilippo, and Joe Mingles, our referee, and he tosses it in the air. We're underway from the garden. And Penn State Nitty Lines, man a man, Brad Nestler. And at the point. Tony Miller. Oh, a steal, almost a steal by Dan Earl in the opening play of the ballgame. And his growth this year, according to Bruce Barkley, stronger, solid, making shots has helped his club come this far, this fast. Around a pick. Keeper brings it back on top. Nice little head there by Secunda. Very sound defensive team. Eight on the shot clock. Good defense by Penn State to open the game. McCaskill may have to rush one here from 17 off the glass. Oh, is that attractive, huh? There then, are kisses. And then there are power kisses. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are some drills home. <laughs> Two nothing. Mark that front. Abraham down there on him. Uh, Mike said that he was going to start with him. Maybe a mock and ball, ball and assist. But he will be taken away from the basket by Secunda, who can shoot. Amici's a wide low. This is Williams outside. Just inside the three-point line. Williams had tough outings in the first two NIT games, scoreless, but had 10 in the win that got him here. And that was a huge one over Iowa. That got with its first turnover. Uh, Peeper got in a little too deep. Now, you covered Vandy a few times. Frank Secker, mm -hmm. Peeper's cousin. Uh, not a bad performer from deep, is he? Gutsy, scrappy. Yeah. Runs was... in the family, I guess. Huh? And they were here last year. Think about it. Yeah. Vandy. And a whistle inside. And Meiji got tangled up and picks up his first foul. Well, they always try and clean it up early. Uh, they've addressed the low post. Uh, when you body a guy out, he's got as much right to a position. And right here, a nice open and close. And you can see Amici more forceful of the two. Got to get by Sell and Faye Shell. <laughs> got him out of the way, but picked up the foul. And you got that one out of the way. <laughs> Thank goodness. It's a long night. We're playing two. Look at the double by Earl and then a triple. And Abraham still got it up and in. It comes on the other end. Ran out of room on the baseline. Got the ball back. Nearly scored. And a foul underneath. What's it? Abraham, Isaac, and John. They all showed up down in the block right here. Uh, the gamble by second. Now Earl comes around and Amici, who has made terrific strides. A very good understanding defensively as well as the other end. Second leading scorer on this Penn State team. But in the NIT, it's been a little bit quiet for him. Ten points in the first game, two points in the second game, four against Iowa. But there's his season numbers. And a great free throw shooter, as you can tell on those two. Tied at four. Mike Dean's lament was he never gets three guys having their best offensive game. He was hoping they might all show up tonight. One might go have a bad evening and two show up. Something we saw Virginia Tech have. They always have three or four guys mm -hmm. with balanced scoring, and that's how they are in the championship round against the winner of this one. Eford. Tips. Carlton saved it. Almost lost it on the baseline. Nice hustle by Rashawn Carlton. Oh, he's some target in there, isn't he? He is a big target. They'll drop it back outside, though. He's got the quick puppies, too, though. And there he is again. Flat, and I say flesh, and he sort of lumbers, but... Secunda around a pick. Strong rebound by Abraham. And the lead ahead. Wave it off. Offensive foul. Well, that's his game. Offering it up for the alma mater. And Mike D not real happy, but you saw the look by Miller. Over 900 assists. Not all for Mike Dean, but uh, that was a great look and unfortunately a better defensive play. 942 assists for Tony Miller. That is something else. That's 10 best. 
in the country. Carl outside for three. Oh, does he help people? Rashawn outside gives the Macy a little hope in. And State with its first lead. Amazing when you look at that stroke by Carl, just around 39-40% from three and field goal. Seems like it should be higher. Deeper thought about a three of his own. Miller packing it down low. McCaskill on a wheel. Doesn't get the deal. Secundo will clear it off. And here comes Earl on the run. There's that fadeaway. Packs it in a Mechie. Boy, he drew some company in her, didn't he? And Earl uh, helped him get that company with the nice push early offense. The thing about running the ball, Brad, is defensively, you've got to get back and get adjusted. You can see here, Amici gets a nice little opportunity because of Earl's dribble pressure. And Abraham's going to have to sit, and McCaskill will go as well as Marquette will go to the bench. Crawford comes in. So we had that shot of Judd Heathcote. I believe he'll be on at halftime of this game. And uh, Mike Dean learned under the, the mentor. That's right. 82 to 86. There he, he is. said to Judd, when I talked to him about when's the last time he cared about, uh, not cared about watching a game, he said, well, the second one I do, because we got a Big Ten team in there, and then we got my old assistant coach, Mike Dean, who was in East Lansing, 82 through 86. So he's got a little bit of heart on both sides, I guess, of this one. And what a personality, too. He and his wife there taking in the action. He's a beauty. He'll be desperately missed. Oh, will he? With the dry humor. They're going out west, right? To going home. out to Washington mm -hmm. for his retirement. Spokane, excuse me. I think that's where he's going. I noticed the refs didn't give him a gift as he toured the Big Ten, incidentally. <laughs> as Peeper spots up and nails it. And cuts the lead down to one. <laughs> Earl got an opening, and he buries a triple. On his old high school, Shawnee, his brother was the captain. Lost their last game to St. Anthony. And well coached Joe Kessler. What an impressive job he does. Strong rebound inside for Joseph, who just came off the bench a few moments ago. Keep it alive for Marquette. They trail by four. Peeper <laughs> using his peeper. He sure is. He's got more than a knot hole. Puts it back to one. He's got two threes on the night. And 67 for the year. He's their best three-point shooter. A bell down there. Just close vision on the ball. This is going to cost him. Well, they Ooh, confirmed. Foul. Amici got popped in the eye. He goes down. Still down. I think the contact lens has either popped out or he's got it in his hand. And he's hoping for a stoppage in play so he can get that thing back in. The officials... Are going to let him play on a three-pointer for foul. Chance for a four-point play. Whew. And then that happened because amazing. Now, I looked at a couple of their games, and I don't remember seeing the high pick and roll. I've seen a side little action. Oh, no, they do. They have it. And this is Amici out high. Amici's setting the pick with a contact in his right hand. Cup in his head. And uh, this is where it all happens. Uh, the look. And, and this will rearrange a lens right here. Boink. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> no foul. A fortuitous loss of the contact as they end up with a possible four-point play for Earl. He went over and told Joe Mingus, Joe, I lost my contact. Joe said, we didn't know. And it's going back in while his teammate steps up to the free throw line. That is one of the few things they will hold up play for. Always a nice, comfortable situation. you got about 10,000 people trying to watch you in a building uh, put a contact back in that's been in your hand for the last minute and a half. It's not as easy to do as you would think. No. You, of course, have great eyesight. In hindsight, I do. <laughs> yes. Or did, I should say. <laughs> Out of England, huh? Come over here, did some high school. And got to be a pretty darn good basketball player up at Penn State. Earl missed a chance at a rare four-point play. And on the other end, the three drops for Eford. Local youngster, too. Got a lot of family here, he said. Queens. Secunda set up his own shot there off the dribble. A Jersey boy with the Syracuse and always could shoot it. 16-13, Penn State with six minutes in. He looks a lot stronger than he did at Syracuse. I think he's maturing and 
I'm sure Joe has to use the weights up there once in a while. I think so. You think uh, Carter has first dibs, though? Crawford. <laughs> Maybe for a little while. Crawford walked with it. Off to a good start in this second semifinal of the NIT, and it's Penn State leading Marquette by three. When I punch the clock, I'm a working machine. I got boots that do the job, got my Wolverines. Lay a span of bridge, make that molten steel pour. I can build a better country and keep coming back for more. I can work like hell with my hands and my tools. Gonna feel like heaven in my Wolverine boots. Wolverine Duroshocks, guaranteed comfort or your money back. Work like hell, feel like heaven. Wolverine Duroshocks, made in the USA. Before you move forward, Canon paves the way. Before productivity declines, Canon raises network document processing to a new level. We give you the digital office connection to increase productivity now and beyond. Printing, faxing, copying, scanning, and filing, all through a multifunction system. When the rest say you can't, Canon says you can. The GP55 series from Canon. Now you can. Call 1-800-OK-CANON. We could make our new jet ski watercraft perform like everybody else's, but first, we'd have to slow it down. The new 900 ZXI. Watercraft World's Watercraft of the Year. To soothe athlete's foot, Desinex does it. But to cure athlete's foot, Desinex does it. Only Desinex has UDA to both soothe the discomfort and kill the fungus. To soothe and cure, Desinex does it all. Jalamachi, who spent uh, the good majority of that time out still trying to clear the contact lens in the right eye where he took a shot. And it might be halftime before he gets that thing completely the way it feels comfortable. Second player in Penn State history with those numbers, 1,200 and 700. And he's going to be on the bench as we start things up with 13.48 to go first half. Brad Nessler, Bill Raftery with you. Second semifinal in the NIT. And Penn State leading Marquette by three. Pete Lasicki into the Nittany line lineup of big three-point shooter. And he's hit some... Big shots in the NIT after really struggling against Miami. Got a huge one there. And had the one to beat Iowa to get him here. Here he is. And there he goes. That's his game, huh? Ran it out. And kept the line. Swatted away by McCaster. Great looking block. And trying to save it. As Aaron Hutchins who checked in for Marquette. And speaking of guys helping their program, Mike Dean said he has been sensational for them late in the year. Has he ever? So that might have been partially blocked. Comes up air ball. Here comes Tony Miller on the run. And here is Hutchins on the other end. Leads it on the baseline. Up ball. So mm. come to the rebound. Those you gotta make. Fouled as he made a trip toward the baseline. Ah, uh, Hutchins in his first. There's Crawford coming back in, 6'8 sophomore. And Eford will get a breather next to Mike Dean. Secunda goes out, and Big Phil Williams. Mr. We'll Williams. Mr. Mr. Williams. At that size. Perfect spot to trap, huh? Step in. Steal and ahead to Miller on the run. Smart play by Williams, too, not getting involved. He's got to throw it towards the backcourt or make it in the middle of the floor somehow when it's that trap on the wing. Wow. He's got five. Screen and a pop out here. William Garuda. And Earl will bring it up court in Penn State. And he'll pull up and nail a three. And in the disadvantage, Hutchins a little smaller. Able to get that shot off easily. Earl, who was 
fairly quiet against Miami in the first round NIT game. That had 14 points and seven assists in the second one. And a career high 13 assists against Iowa. But he has come out firing tonight. Three threes already. That was a great game, huh? A three to win it late. Another three going up there. Comes off. Lasicki the rebound. Got the offense on Earl, I believe, on that screen away. Timeout with 11:27 as Earl picks up the foul, but he's also helped pick up his team. Three triples on the night and has helped his team to a six-point lead. <gasps> Look! Oh my gosh! It's a little chip. Oh, he looks like a little person. They're really not. Look how smart he is. They're not very intelligent, honey. They're dopey. Look at them. We have a dummy on our hood. Oh, where, where's he going? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And now, Valley of the Apes. <laughs> touch of one button. Emergency road services. Amazing. Nokia cellular phones. 11-27 to go first half. NIT semifinals 21-15 Penn State. Marquette coming in 20 and 11. On the season, they beat Auburn behind Hutchins, who Raff was talking about, lit it up from three-point land in that one in a seven-point win. And then Peeper was huge against St. Bonaventure by nine. And then over South Florida, 57-50 OT to get to the Garden. And Mike Dean, who was at the Garden Party last year with a different team, brought Sienna in here to the Final Four last year. Both teams off the hot starts from outside the arc. I said, Mike, it's nice to have you back. And he said, well, like New York, New York. I named it twice. I was so happy I thought I'd come back for the different team. Come back twice. See what hanging around Judd does to you? Yeah, you bet. And uh, she's just a little bit crazy. Penn State went a little bit of his zone there. And, and talking about Mike Dean, he felt their second Cincinnati game, they got crushed the first one. They tried to become a good basketball team as they get a little McCrory's basement. Uh, Hutchins, who's struggling a little bit with Danny Earl. Getting back to the Cincy game, he said all of a sudden they started to believe in our preparation and what we were saying about the opponent and about ourselves. And they just stepped up big time as the year progressed. That one of the losses late against a terrific St. Louis team who stepped up big, got to the NCAA for Spoon Hour. Mike joining Eddie Hickey and Hank Raymonds as the only coaches who had 20 plus win seasons in their rookie year as the head man of Marquette. Foul. He'll be on Crawford, and he had to make sure against the big fella. And what a terrific look as they get the great angle. The adjusting defense did not recover. Earl picked it apart. That's Bill Williams' numbers on the season. Four rebounds a night. Marquette already over the limit now and fouls the rest of the way, which has 10.48 left to go. You know, if I'm going to go for a walk the next few days in New York, I think I'm going to have Phil with me. Phil. Come on along. They list him at 265. I think uh, I need the scale from his bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> He's got some guns on him, though, doesn't he? He sure does. Favorable read from that scale, I'll tell you that. Not so favorable from the free throw line. Marquette trying to get it down to a three-point ball game. Almost threw it away. Keeper tried to pack it inside of McCaskill. Kicked away by Penn State. And they've had their problems at this end. Not real smooth. Not finishing it with a goal. 
and the good Penn State reaction back to the man of man. Eifer Crawford. Eifer, McCaskill and Crawford on the drive. Miss and Williams standing all alone for the rebound. And Amici just rested over there again. Plenty of insight into the game from the Pines. Maybe still trying to find his sight from that contact lens problem. He hasn't been back in since it went out. Six point game, almost the midway point, first half. Carl works the baseline. Running out of territory. Ball still loose. Yeah, about, yeah, there must be about, what, 12 hands on it in there. Well, there's, there's at least eight, <laughs> or, or eight pair, I should say. Lasicki and Donovan Williams, the only smart guys. They're back by half court, balance to the floor. There's John Amici, still on the bench. There's his double-double, what he did against Iowa. Those are typical numbers. First team, all Big Ten player. Great to listen to him, isn't it? Yeah, that, that the English accent so proper. And he says it doesn't sound very smart when you try to talk trash and you've got a British accent. <laughs> <laughs> and the little body action. By with a push. That's a Michael Joseph in for Amici. We'll go to the free throw line. Dad's a pretty good football player at Southern. They have Preston. Cat has yet to go to the line, and Penn State's not exactly lighting it up from the line. Still on. And Efren with a nice slap back to the basket to enable Crawford to come up with it. Mike Dean said yesterday, we're a horrible free throw shooting team, but somehow the opposition has managed to shoot worse from the free throw line this year than we have. <laughs> I don't think you can count on that all year long. No. Penn State goes back. Now, let's see. Look, two, three. Well, they are working in this song. Tony Miller gave up a three. McCaskill's going to take a long jump. Didn't get the roll. Carlton, solid player underneath for the rebound. That was definitely not a Tavern League 2-3 zone. No. With the hands up. Carlton. Keeper off the miss. Marquette has made one of its last seven shots, and they have a tendency to have these kind of dry spells. They're not a great shooting team, admittedly, uh, according to their coach. And Carlton picks up the foul. Coming up on Thursday night, we're going to switch gears to get you on the ice. The 95 NCAA Division I Hockey Championship semifinals live at 1 o'clock on ESPN. Boston University taking on the Golden Gophers of Minnesota. And then another Big Ten team on the deuce. Michigan will take on Maine. The winners will meet for the national title Saturday at 1.30 Eastern on ESPN. Those are some good hockey programs. Those four I mentioned. And Amici is back in for Penn State. First time he's been in there in several minutes. Now you must have followed a little hockey being from Minnesota. Uh -huh. They've always had good teams up there. Keeper got it blocked and got it back. Shot clock continues to run, though. And they go back to the man to man. There's a little pick on either side. Williams does not show on the hedge. Peeper, he's got a couple threes tonight. Going to work for a real tough look there. And Amici just slammed it down with his elbow. Lasicki picks up the loose ball. I think that was a pass, don't you, to Joseph uh, at the end? He'd like to call it that. Greg <laughs> Barker was just checked in. And he can get in a streak and be a hot shooter as well. Amici backing in on McCaskill. Finally touches and walks. Well, all that rest, huh? It didn't help. And Lasicki worked very hard. Peeper followed him. They ran a series of bumps to try and get the jump shooter free. McCaskill comes back in. And McCall will sit. Nobody has scored in almost four minutes in this thing. We expected low scoring. And you got it, huh? And we got it. It was on a much faster pace until the last four minutes, obviously. Still 21-15 at the eight-minute mark. And Lasicki with a push. Pretty good denial. That was a good defensive set. Tried to go over the top. Gets called for the 
Right at the eight minute mark, Bruce Barkill awaits his team. They're still in front. Last time we took a timeout, I think it was the same score. 21 to 15, Nittany Lions lead. GMC trucks are always there when you need them. Rugged enough to handle tough conditions safely. With the smooth ride of a fine automobile. Wherever you're going, a GMC truck from your Lehigh Valley Pocono GMC dealer will get you there safely. And you wouldn't believe how many kids they hold. Get a GMC truck. See Faulkner GMC in Bethlehem, Star in Easton, Abeloff in Stroudsburg, Casey in Quakertown, and Divert in Allentown. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. Stories that take you off the beaten path. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. Sponsored by your Lehigh Valley Chevy Geo dealers, your low payment leaders. Smo, four champions put it all on the line in a four-star night of title fights. After outpointing Michael Carbajal in two brutal battles, Chiquita Gonzalez takes on number one contender, Jesus Zuniga. After overpowering Kevin Kelly in a stunning upset, Alejandro Gonzalez faces Luis Espinosa. Fernando Hernandez takes on the ultimate showman, Mauro Mar Paez. And Daniel Jimenez squares off against Marco Antonio Pereira. Live on pay-per-view. Call your local cable company to order. And when you grew up in Manchester, England, sometimes the lights of New York Stop City can be fun. Crazy diet. <laughs> That's not her, is it? Yeah, it is. House and John Amici taking a trip What's in oh, it's out Times time. Square last night. And tonight, his trip on the court was cut short a little bit by a contact lens problem. And he has not been a factor, both on the scoring or the rebound again, but you always have the feeling by the end of the night he will be. He had more trouble on the floor here than he did in the street. I think so. I wouldn't mess with him either. 6'10", about 275, and nobody's put anything in in the last four minutes, so we went from basically TV timeout to TV timeout without <laughs> anything going in. And Miller, I think, is going to have to penetrate and do some things because Penn State's reacting terrific to the sets. Switching the exchanges. Eford at it stripped by Lasicki. 13 on the shot clock. Eford pulls up and Lasicki got him. It'll be a shooting foul. Number two, is that on Pete? Mm -hmm. now, you also have to know who you're playing. Uh, once in a while, Eford has some troubles with the stroke. I had to try to let him make one or two before yeah. I get up that aggressively. Earl's going to check back in, and Lasicki will sit with his second person. Earl kind of has that uh, Danny Hurley look, doesn't he? He sure does. That's very much like so. Bobby Eford, 6'6 junior. It's 1 3 to show for it tonight, but 1,062 to show for it on his career. As you see, he's a local product. He played at New, New Hampton Prep. Got the second. He was at the city for a while, Berkshire's school before that, for three years. And, and one of the members of that team that beat Kentucky two years ago, Kevin O'Neill. And I think Kevin's going to do a heck of a job at Tennessee. What's your read having done? Folks down there love him yeah. so far, even though the team was not that great. Nice cleanup work by Bartram. Great reaction. You can see they're concentrating on the big fella. Miller pulls up for three. Didn't get the roll. Donovan Williams will bring it up with Penn State leading by seven. And nice mix they have at guard. They both can be lead guards, it looks like. Williams trying to pack it into a Meiji and he lost the handle. Well, even the big guys, uh, you got to get down and don't let the basketball go out of bounds. I'm not saying it was the best of passes, but if you want to play the post, you got to be able to handle it. Under seven minutes, you talk about dry spells for Marquette. We talked about them. One of, the last, one of the last ten have gone in. Who's the shooting coach? Huh? You blame Boo Ellis or Michael Rice? McCaskill way off the mark there. And he has got an easy rebound. One of their last 11 now from the field are the Golden Eagles. 
Williams on a runner. Tony Miller will pull it and bring it. There you try to penetrate. That's better. Still didn't get it to go. And loose ball comes off, and Donovan Williams is back-to-back -back rebounds for Penn State. Do you feel Penn State is quicker to the ball? And they seem to be getting more loose balls. And Miller, I thought, could have had that one and didn't react. Earl will give and go with Williams. And Bartram, tough drive to a foul. Nice little ball fake by Bartram, sort of froze the defense. And uh, the attractive part about their perimeter people, they can make some jump shots. So you got to play up, and then they can create with the bounce. Foul on Joseph. We'll send Bartram to the free throw line. Part of Mike Dean's philosophy, Brad, was to have Joseph Streeter and McCaskill and Abraham beat up on a, on a Macy, and they haven't had to. No, not at all. Not necessary. Penn State, three of nine from the free throw line. Now, you're a contact guy. Do you struggle after you get it whacked out? <laughs> I mean, he is not Maybe if you get it embedded in your eye when you get nailed, that could hurt a little bit, I guess. But did it take you out of your game is the question. Well, if I lose one tonight, they'll take me out of my game. I'll be wearing those half glasses of yours. Three-pointer goes for Peeper. Nothing and wrong with his eyes. Nothing. He don't need any contacts. Three triples for Peeper. 24-19. And Amici again lost the handle on the dish inside, but it'll still be Penn State ball. And they were trying to little alley oop to Glenn Secunda. And so much traffic around Amici, he's unable to catch and deliver. Marquette will bring Abraham back in, and McCaskill will sit. Williams to trigger it. Five and a half minutes left, first half, and a blocking foul on Peeper. Will be his second. Well, you can have droughts as long as you contain the other club, and Penn State not able to count it with much. Well, that is something that Marquette has done effectively. When you're not a great shooting team, you better hold the opposition down to a bad field goal percentage. And they're second in the country as of mid-March when the regular season ended. 37.9% Marquette's opponent shot on the year. And they held 20 of their previous 31 opponents before tonight to under 40%. So that helps the cause. And they're only at 41 themselves. Yeah, that's right. And here comes Will Gates. If you haven't seen Hoop Dreams, he is one of the young men that was chronicled in that documentary that uh, after seeing it, I think the Academy Awards would be ashamed of themselves and it's not up for best documentary. I don't know much about the movies, but I know how much I like the movie. Did you uh, pay or did you have it delivered? Actually, the fine folks that put that together uh, got me a copy so I could watch it all by myself without any inter interruption from mm -hmm. uh, my daughter or you or anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she'll be glad to hear that. Yeah. We're down to 5-10. Seven-point ball game. Penn State in the lead. A little bit of a 2-3 match. Look at the defense. My goodness. Tough shot there. Yeah. Uh, Saul, I don't know if that was exactly the shot Mike Dean would like to have seen go up. Well, Zach uh, only gets about six minutes a game. He's going to make hay while he could. He should run into Michael up at the Mac Championship. In Albany, big guy in Albany. His uh, wife's family up there. Earl got loose around a pit. Gates got back on him defensively. That left Williams open though outside. Donovan Williams with a jumper and a nine-point Penn State lead. Drive, draw, and deliver. Same thing here. Gates picked up by Williams. Now the move to the hoop came up short. And Marquette continues to struggle from the floor. Bartram clears ahead to Earl. He pulls up squares and nails another three. Four of them in this half. Well, that's just a lapse defensively. You've got to come up and step up on the guy. The lead is swelled to a dozen for the Nittany Lions with 4-11 left in the half. <laughs> it's been our observation that people don't necessarily like the idea of getting older. It's a gut be gone. Roy just loves his. 
In which case, we have a suggestion. Ta-da! Now make a wish. Wish. A 175 horsepower fountain of youth. The 95 Isuzu Rodeo. Practically amazing. Uh, excuse me, sir. Um, what are you doing? Printing a picture. Wow, is that a new Hewlett Packard DeskJet 540 printer? It's a nine inch high knee armor with a shield. I see. Yeah, wise choice, this HP DeskJet, huh? How about that printer? Isn't it, uh, uh, durable? Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I guess so. So I bet your parents get a lot of use out of it, though, huh? Yeah, I guess. You guess? They don't wear the stuff they print. Isn't that just like parents? Yep, boring. You said it. it. You jerk. I never want to see you again. Oh! Savannah, soft 100% cotton pants. They're the only pants made with Process 2000. So they don't wrinkle. Which means you'll always come off looking good. No matter what you've done. Well, Brad, the artist in me likes to come out on occasion, <laughs> get that defense to come over and help, and then space out, as I've been known to do in the course of my lifetime. <laughs> get that D to react, kick, and please, please, knock it down. And then Earl, with a three of his own, brings it down. They don't come out quick enough, and he says hello to his fourth triple of the night. Well, that's perfect, isn't it? The setup, the squaring of the shoulder, the rotation. I saw Penn State in their first round game against Miami and Earl was quite frankly not much of an offensive force. He ended up with seven assists and seven points. But tonight, wow, 14 already to go with four assists. Now, I watched that game. That was some comeback. Oh, was it? Ever? Miami looked like they were in total control. Penn State dead in the water, down 20 with 14 to play. And they came back in front of their hometown folks, a uh, crowd that I think swelled by a couple thousand between opening tip and the uh, final horn. And they won it. Did Joe take you out for dinner? Are you Joe Pye close? Joe not take me out to dinner. He usually takes me out to lunch for the football season. Uh -huh. Lying in there. Can you explain the game to him? Try to. He's won a couple more than I have. He sure has. Uh, like 230 more than I have. <laughs> Great credit to the game, though. It's athletics. A lot more should be like him. Amici. Strong move by Amici for his first field goal. Well, nice to see those quick puppies and then the left-hand delivery. Hutchins. Trying to leave it on the baseline and a foul as Abraham went up. Williams got him. Well, earlier we saw him walking the street. Well, he drives in the three-second lane as well. And they've been throwing a few people at him. Different looks, different shapes. And here the patience to let it clear. And then the delivery. They could use him, can't they? Using a bit of a lane. <laughs> <laughs> a little finger roll with the left hand. He was queuing up in the left. Was he ever? Abraham throws up a brick. Telling you why Marquette shoots 63.9 from the free throw line. Most coaches would cringe hearing that number. Got the second. Now this is where they've been effective. Uh, Mike Dean said, get some steel. Look at that. Miller almost deflected from the rear. Good control. By Donovan. Earl gives him the fake look. Knocked away by Abraham. Give him credit for the steal. Keeper on the drive, but out of control at the end of it. A nice job by Bartram and Secunda running under him. Bartram nails a three. That's their early offense, huh? You got to come up, and the problem is you got to make you generally down on the block, so you better get out early. Mike Dean's seen enough. Timeout. Marquette with 2.53 left in the half, looking down a 16-point deficit now. Well, having been in these situations, this is a little pizzazz in the huddle, I think. Uh, come on, fellas. They reached back a little bit. They went to the press, didn't get much out of it, and then didn't step up on the shooters. Their fans so far are loving it. The Big Ten's only remaining participant in postseason basketball has got a big lead. Don't forget, coming up, college basketball slam dunk and three-point championships this weekend. And you'll see some great three-point shooters like Sean Resper, 
Damon Stoudemire and Lawrence Moten. In the slam dunk, Lorenzo Orr of USC, Curtis Bostic of Cincinnati, Jermaine Wingfield of Texas, and a lot more. And you'll see the women's three-point shootout as well. It's part one, Friday night at 7.30, and then we'll cap it off Sunday with a conclusion at 5. Who's, by Tal and I will bring you that one. Who's your early choice on the three-pointers? Oh, I'd kind of like Restford a little bit, probably. Yeah, Damon might be tough, too, though. He could be. All those guys are good. Sports Center, da 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 will follow us, but uh, we still have 2.53 left this half, and a second half yet to come to see who will play Virginia Tech's Hokies in the NIT Championship Wednesday night. Raft and I will be back here in the Garden. As Bill Foster's club has already advanced 71-59 over Canisius with a very efficient first semifinal game tonight. And that was the response I used to get in a timeout down by 16. Da. <laughs> They got to get some offense so they can set up some pressure. And they're switching the exchanges on the baseline, almost matching up. And the foul's going to be on Secunda. Marquette has had stretches like this, and we alluded to it earlier. The first nine and a half minutes of the second half against St. Bonaventure, they went without a field goal. But then they went on a 17 to 3 run, and all of a sudden they're in the game, and they come back and, of course, won it. As I think part it's, of their NIT trip to get here. And Brad, excuse me, I think it's marvelous how they've turned the year around. I mean, they looked just brutal, terrible early, early yeah. in January there, and all of a sudden stepped up. Free throw shooting has not been a strong suit, obviously, and it remains a 16-point ball game near the two and a half minute mark. Those Bartram ran a, a lot of bumps and then stepped to the ball. Earl came around a nice pick and then cut off to Joseph. Now Secunda has it stripped from behind. Hutchins squares and delivers. He's the kind of guy they need to get warmed up. Well, they said he's carried them. A lot of spark. And I think you've got to stay pretty basic with Penn State. I don't think they're going to make a lot of mistakes in the open floor. Hutchins is averaging almost 17 a game in the NIT. Here he is again. 4-3. Off the mark, though. Joseph the rebound. And Dan Earl will slow it down with 139 on the clock running first half and Penn State in command by 14. And a great post defense on the other end. They don't turn it into a basket. And it's just not complimenting each trip. Earl, they know they've got to get out of here. He's been red hot from outside the arc. Bartram's hit one tonight, too, but that one is adjusted by Peeper. Cleared off by McCaskill. Up pretty big. Tony Miller, quick moves on the dribble. Eford alone. Got it. A triple for Eford. And look who's knocking at the door at 11. They won't go away either. A little bit like Canisius. They'd like to get it down single digits by the break, and I think they'd be happy with that, considering how cold they've been. Williams around the screen. Didn't get the one-hander. Rebound. I thought Marquette was going to have it, but Eufert's knocked down and lost the handle. John a Digger will be along at halftime, which is about 45 seconds from now. We'll have highlights of that first matchup tonight if you missed it. Virginia Tech's win over Canisius. And final four MVPs that Digger will have for you. It's coming up at halftime, less than a minute. So one of Digger's old assistants, Jeff Nix here, uh, Nick Abacher, assistant, was asking us about, he said, I know he looks good, how is he? Oh, I thought I had a play on that one. <laughs> I don't know if you can get up that high. Yeah. And I saw Greg Bartram coming my way, and I decided to bail. On those post screens you mentioned to, uh, earlier for Bartram and the sticky when he's in and Williams, Marquette's been trailing it, and when they could slide behind and beat the guy to the spot. So you might see that adjustment in the second half. And they countered with his own the next time. Well, Marquette is not a good free throw shooting team. They're a good three point team. And a three would be huge right here if they can get one before the break. It would get him into single-digit category. In fact, just a deuce would work. 
Here comes the three, and there it goes. Coach Nestler, but all off the penetration. Now you got to get on Secunda, stripped away from Secunda, and it is a single-digit advantage is all. When once it was 16 at halftime, Marquette has cut it down to 36-28 as they ended the half on an 8-0 run. So the Golden Eagles very much still in it. But at halftime, the Big Ten's Nittany Lions and Penn State lead 36-28 as we send it back to John Saunders and Digger Phelps. Guys? All right, Brad and Bill, thanks a lot. You coaches love to back each other. That was a terrific timeout. Call Great timeout. You got that by Marquette, and it gave him the 8-0 run. But I really think if Tony Miller starts getting the assist, that's what he likes to do, get Hutchins shooting the threes again. He had 18 points the other night, and I think that's a combination. Guards control tournament play. All right, trying to move on to the final on Wednesday, which you'll see here on ESPN. One team already in. That's Virginia Tech. When we come back, we'll have a look at the highlights of that game. We'll also take a look at Diggers' MVPs over the weekend of the teams who are headed to the Final Four. Plenty more to come here at halftime. ESPN's presentation of the NIT is brought to you by Isuzu, makers of the four-wheel drive trooper, marathon champion in last year's Paris-Dakar rally. Clean or what? Super 8 motel rooms are clean. Here are clean. There are clean. Everywhere are clean, clean. And comfortable. Super 8 motels. 1-800-800-8000. Clean, comfortable, and affordable. Light ice for the taste that goes all out. We are out. This is a lot better! Yeah! Much better! Miller Light Ice. The night is young. Genuine Jackie. Genuine. Real quality. Genuine Real fit. No wonder guys feel comfortable with Jackie. Genuine people. Genuine Jackie. Genuine. To soothe athlete's foot, Desinex does it. But to cure athlete's foot, Desinex does it. Only Desinex has UDA to both soothe the discomfort and kill the fungus. To soothe and cure, Desinex does it all. Is there such a thing as a lease that's fun? Well, if it's a lease on a 1995 two-wheel drive Isuzu Rodeo, there is. Because at just $267 a month, it makes enjoying the big-time fun of a rodeo really easy. And if you don't believe us, just look how much fun our lawyers had with it. Geez, guys, not that much fun. Oof. Come on. Offer not valid on Mars or other non-terrestrial sites. Sheesh. Isuzu, practically amazing. I need coffee. Coffee, coffee. It's Jerry. He runs the Super 8 Motel. He's like all their people, friendly and helpful. Can't be a relative. <laughs> Super 8, super people, super prices at over 1,000 locations nationwide. Welcome back. Penn State has the lead over Marquette at halftime in this one. As we talked about the previous game, teams starting out very, very slow. In the first game, Canisius didn't show up for a while. No, they did, and it's a spurts, and you get into spurts, and then comes three-point shooting. Yeah, and trying to catch up, and trying to catch up in the second half is exactly what Canisius had to do. Look at Louis Karnasek is there, Judd Heathcote as well. Judd Heath Heathcote, who coached his final game this year. Damon Watlington with the strip and finds Sean Good. He jams it down early lead. Then Ace Custis makes the nice pass and gets the good layup. And then Digger, the three start to yeah, fly. Yeah, they start just when you see what Dan Earl did, shooting four threes in the first half for Penn State. Here it comes right here now with Watlington hitting one, two. You got it. One more coming up. Top, ball fake, drive, off the line. Yes, he gets four threes in the first half, John. And then everyone touches the ball on this one. Ace Custis will finish underneath. Knocking it down. Virginia Tech, 52 to 36. Michael Meeks had his problems. He misses that little hook there. Craig Wise, though, kept it close. He had a terrific day. Draining this three. Then Chris Young steps up, and he knocks down a three. Cuts the lead down to seven. 
as they start to make a run, but Michael Meeks misses this three late, and Virginia Tech, Bill Foster gets out of town with the victory. Actually, he'll stay in town because he has <laughs> one more game to play there. That one on Wednesday, 71-59 to was the final there. Damon Washington had 20 points. Ace Custis had 18 points and 10 rebounds. So Virginia Tech, a winner in our first semifinal, awaiting the winner of the game you're watching where Penn State has the lead over Marquette at halftime. When you talk about the NIT, just how important is it for a squad? You're disappointed, you didn't make the field of 64, and you're trying to build on something. Well, the last five years, the winner has gone on to the NSA tournament. We saw what Villanova, the year they had, yet, you know, okay, they lose in the uh, East, but still, you really build your program to step forward and move to the top of the NCAA tournament next year. Yeah, that's where you've got to get there, to the field of 64. You don't want to yell, we're number 65, which is what <laughs> many of them do. All right, let's remind you that coming up on Wednesday, Virginia Tech is in. They will face the winner of this game, Penn State or Marquette. Right now, Penn State has that lead with the second half straight ahead. And some good news for Miami fans. Coach Leonard Hamilton has been re-signed to a new four-year contract. What a turnaround on the squad. They did not win a game in the Big East last year, 0 for 18. They go 9-9 and -9 this year, including winning nine of their last 15 matchups in the Big East. Biggest turnaround in Big East history. He was also the Big East Coach of the Year. And good news for North Carolina fans. They have yet another tremendous high school player coming in. Six foot six inch Vince Carter out of Daytona Beach in Florida, averaging 22 points a game, 11 rebounds, and over four assists a game. He announced today he's going to North Carolina and not to Florida State, which is where everyone thought he was headed. Stick around. We still have some more to come. When we come back, we'll look at Digger's MVPs, the squads who are headed to the Final Four, the big guys who got them there. That and more in a moment. You a sports fan? Then you know what this is. All the games you're missing. How'd the Chiefs pull ahead? How'd Seattle blow out the Nuggets? Well, with DirecTV, you see the action, not just the scores. NFL, NHL, NBA, college, hundreds of games you probably couldn't get before. Games only on in other cities. Hey, you want numbers? Get a newspaper. You want sports? Get DirecTV. With a DirecTV dealer nearest you, call 1-800-DIRECTV. Hi, may I help you? Yeah, I need some shorts to play basketball. Indoor or outdoor? Uh, outdoor. Uh, full court or half court? Half, I guess. Uh, pick up or play? Shirts or skin? Excuse me? Uh, day or night, home or away, team or one-on-one? -on -one. Is activewear becoming too specialized for you? Try Discus Athletic. Heavyweight sweats and tees. The activewear that's right for however you play. Discus Athletic. The way America plays. Horse or pig? Funny thing about March Madness, as more teams drop out, more friends drop in. Fewer teams, more friends. Good thing Pizza Hut has the March Madness meal deal. Buy any large, regular-priced pizza, and we'll throw in a dozen free buffalo wings plus a free NCAA tournament guidebook. Because by the time only two teams are left, you're going to have a lot of friends. Free wings and a free guidebook from Pizza Hut. You'll love the stuff we're made of. Peter's got me on this mission to find Marcus Belfry. So I'm learning everything I can about him. Father from Azerbaijan, mother from Colorado, Ooh. raised in Switzerland. I spent my childhood in Switzerland. So I'm going to find him, talk to him, and convince him that Gramercy is the right house for him. Not a hurry with a modem. Madness, the next show in the series from Chicago at Michael Jordan's restaurant, midnight Easter time on Wednesday. We'll break down the final four. Well, it has been a tough night for Hoop Dreams. William Gates' squad Marquette is down at halftime to Penn State. And Hoop Dreams in the one nomination they got, they did not win in film editing. He can still go one for one tonight if he gets his offense going. <laughs> he can come on. He'd rather have this victory, That's I'm right. sure, than win that one. Now, it's an interesting uh, matchup when you look at North Carolina against Arkansas. First of all, it's a matchup of the two last MVPs. Corliss Williamson, who won it last year, and Donald Williams, who won it the year before. And it's also the first time since 1962 when Ohio State met Cincinnati that the last two champions go head-to-head. -head. So there's a couple of MVPs, but you have some others you'd like to talk yeah, about. Yeah, because I thought this weekend, when you take a look at all the stars that did show up, there's some other people that made things happen behind the scenes that I called my MVPs to why their team stayed in balance. And when you see this, right now, Toby Bailey, UCLA, yeah. 
26 points, 9 rebounds against Connecticut. He also shut down Darrell Wilson of Mississippi State, and that's why they advanced to the Final Four. You got it right now. Scott Pierce from Oklahoma State yesterday. 12 points, 8 rebounds for Oklahoma State against UMass. Another guy, unsung hero, got it done. Alex Dillard gets the key steal against Virginia. Goes all the way, one-on-one, -on -one, take it through you and to you for a three-point play. But he also had 19 points against Memphis. And finally, Dante Calabria. Yeah, Williams, Stackhouse have 18 apiece yesterday. Don't need your three today, Dante. Do this. Play the defense against Wildcats. You got it. All over the floor. His teammates know it. They hug him. They love him. Dante Calabria was the guy today that was the MVP for North Carolina. And these are the guys, when you take a look at what goes on, different roles, different times, four unsung heroes that were really the MVPs to why these teams got to the Final Four. But now, Calabria against Arkansas, time for you, Dante. You got to start shooting the threes again. Yeah, without them, they don't make it to the Final Four. Likely Pierce played much of the game with three fouls as well. He was terrific. Stick around. We still have more to come here. We are at halftime. Penn State has the lead over Marquette. Winner of this one goes on to face Virginia Tech in a championship game of the NIT on Wednesday. At the Discovery Channel, we go to extraordinary lengths to tell extraordinary stories. Stories that take you off the beaten path. So if we see it, you see it. The Discovery Channel. Explore your world. Sponsored by your Lehigh Valley Chevy Geo dealers, your low payment leaders. Do you dread shopping, the traffic, the parking, the hassle? If so, come to the shops at 3900 Hamilton Center, where shopping is both enjoyable and convenient. The shops at 3900 Hamilton Center have a wide variety of unique stores with professional people ready to serve you. Experience the best kept secret in the Lehigh Valley. Shopping that is both easy and convenient. The shops at 3900 Hamilton Center, where Hamilton Boulevard meets I-78 and 309, across from Dorney Park. The simple notion of playing the game with grace and joy has returned. Say hello to Grand Hill. The Hill by Fila. Ten thirty Eastern Time on Saturday. After you've watched the semifinal games in the NCAA tournament, turn over to ESPN and watch Dickie V's prime time performers. They'll let you know who some of the outstanding players and some other strange awards, Mother Teresa Award, ET Peters, NY. Dan Earl is trying to come back, knocking down this three as Penn State has the lead over Marquette. Oh, he looks like a little person. They're really not. Look how smart he is. They're not very intelligent, honey. They're dopey. Look at them. We have a dummy on our hood. Oh, where, where's he going? For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And now, Valley of the Apes. Football can be exciting. But truck football? Now that's a rush. <laughs> so if you're going to tackle it, you better get a hold of the right equipment. A 1995 Ford Ranger 4x4. Red 39! Complete with switch-on four-wheel drive, new four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and a whopping four-liter V6. So get a Ford Ranger 4x4 and play truck football. How am I going to spike this thing? <laughs> Excuse me. Mind if I ask you about your new Hewlett Packard DeskJet 540 printer? Uh, could you hang on? Sure. That's quite a smart choice, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Somebody's been working pretty hard tonight. Diligently working away as your faithful DeskJet 540 prints out page after great looking page. Uh-oh. What happened? I just sliced my tee shot into the lake. Should have used the five iron. The affordable DeskJet 540 printer from Hewlett Packard. Can I play? As a new parent, my hours can be pretty unpredictable. 
I think a lot of the young parents that come into my office and talk about life insurance have a lot of the same needs and have gone through a lot of the same things that I've gone through. They're really looking for somebody to tell them about life insurance, to talk to somebody they trust. When people leave my office, I think they feel that, hey, this guy doesn't just know about life insurance, he knows about life, too. State Farm is there. Penn State leading Marquette by eight. It's Oscar night, so why not throw back to them with something to do with the movies? Well, you know, when you look at Raft, he reminds me of Leslie Nielsen. I'm sure he's going to go out in New York City tonight and show his Oscar to everybody as he hits every uh, routine pub that's available. <laughs> well, I've heard of the movie Deep Cover. I heard Raft was nominated in the movie <laughs> Deep Pockets, which I'm sure he was a star in. Right <laughs> Wednesday night, huh? Yeah, you got 40 hours off. Yeah. Back to you, Raph. And Brad. Okay. Alligator Arms, along with Brad Nestler, back <laughs> Madison Square Garden, 36-28. Get those things in a little bit closer there. Halftime, 36-28. Uh, Good run, though, by Marquette at the end of that half raft. And our big guys that we talked about at the beginning of the game really aren't delivering, but the little guys are. Uh, the little guards are stepping up. And Meachie, you can see, struggling with McCaskill. Those two guys in the studio, they're out of the drive-in vintage, uh, <laughs> by the way. But the little guys were on fire. As John sets up Digger, well, occasionally a little bump frees up. Danny Earl, four for four, just solid early offense on occasion as they push the basketball up that time off the bump. But uh, the only guy with eyes for the ball was Peeper. Four for five for three pointers for him, and he capped off the 8 0 Marquette run at the end of the half. And you see, both teams have hit six triples tonight. Marquette. Cold shooting on their two-point shots, however. And the rebounding edge heavy in Penn State's favor. Almost twice as many as Marquette's eight and four on the turnover story. But the two guards that we talked about have really been the story tonight in Peeper and Earl. And there's Peeper, the 6'3 sophomore out of Wasaki, Wisconsin. And no cheese head in him. He's got 12 points, four for five from three-point land. Uh, don't tell me you worked a game there, did you? <laughs> in Wasaki? You've been all over. I've probably been that. in some dive in Wasaki. I don't know. And there's the numbers. Uh, Dan Earl, 14 points and four assists. Tony Miller with six assists. One of the tops in the country at that trade. Let's see if Marquette can make it 10 straight points here. Get to within six. And McCaskill, who uh, you noted, is struggling a little bit, doesn't start the second half. We'll let Abraham go down and mix it up with the big guy. Turnover is not the way the Golden Eagles wanted to start this point. Amechi picks up the foul as after missing the hook shot, he got a little aggressive trying to get the rebound. Well, he was in good position. Should have converted. He made one of those earlier in the game. Uh, you let him get it this deep, generally you're going to pay a price for it. And right here, just using the bounce to get himself a little closer in position. And as happens frequently, the frustration bent it. Abraham makes a tough catch. Amechi got a piece of that one. Back-to-back -back turnovers, in essence, for Marquette. And, they get and it. Mike Dean just got a technical. And the walkaway, too, which you like in officials, because you know now when you nail a guy, and that he's going to react but looking on in disbelief and right here he thought this was a little action and he may have been right yeah, he may have been yeah so Earl will shoot the technical you know thinking of New York and uh, the NIT how about Digger Phelps he was a big bigger guy here than he was in South Bend <laughs> unfortunately uh, he seldom went in the kick himself. <laughs> Always gratis for those ND people, those big time supporters to take care of here in the city. A lot of Penn State supporters in this crowd tonight, it sounds like. I they bought a pretty good contingent from State College, I guess, are the alums from this area. Uh, I think they said about 2,000 people. Carlton missed the three. Last touch by Abraham, I believe. Looks like he, uh, Dean has played the guys he felt played the best in the first half. He's got the two little guys out there, Miller and Aaron Hutchins. Oh, he's got his He just threw it to his coach. And Bruce with the good hands. The give back. At halftime, it was over Roy Danforth, who used to coach the Syracuse team before Bayheim, believe it or not. 
uh, was telling me, he said he gets very excited on the bench about defense. You can tell he works very hard on it. Doesn't pay as much attention to the detail on the offensive end. Here's Hutchins. Tough shot. Try to follow is Abraham, and Satunda comes out of the pile with it. Satunda will try it on the other end. His three comes off to Amechi, and he lost the handle. Just a little step off, isn't he? Seems like it. Eford, too strong off the glass. Secunda. Possession arrow will go to Penn State. McCaskill will check back in, as will Crawford. And Eford and Abraham will sit. Carlton, Secunda, Williams, and Amici on the floor for the Nittany Lions who lead 37-28. And Marquette with their man-to-man -man trying to create a little problem, particularly when it comes down here, and they do. Amici's had a hard time handling yeah. the ball tonight. Peeper. Hutchins, so much for the reverse layup. He ran into Amici. That's what they wanted initially. Peeper with one of these. And one of those will work. His fifth of the night. Leads cut down to six. Earl gave up a three. Maybe shouldn't have. Carl, tough slice to the basket through a foul. Crawford got him in route. And they all came into the middle to help out there, but you could. Mike Dean was imploring his club defensively to make a stop in an effort. Nice jump shot by Rashawn as he got right into the middle of the three-second lane. Mike Dean has been total calm since the technical was fouled. In fact, there wasn't a lot of antics when the technical was called on him. So apparently it's how he said it or what he said. Well, he was trying to be a ventriloquist, I think. You know, <laughs> dub it into somebody else's lips. It was somebody at the scorer's table, I swear. <laughs> well, now a chance to get it down to four for the Golden Eagles. And Hutchins trying to do it himself through the foul. He does bring some excitement to the floor. He's fast. And that team may have sparked his club. Sometimes your team says, hey, he cares enough to get involved. Why don't we start and step up and electrifying on the crossover, exploding to the goal. And this one almost had a chance to go down with the left. Aaron's a good free throw shooter. And Meiji steps back down low for Penn State as Hutchins, who had 20, 12, and 18 in the three NIT games, two tonight is all but when he scores him he can score him in a hurry in fact in the game and the win over St. Bonaventure he had all of his 12 points in the last 10 and a half minutes so he's a streak guy if they get him on a streak here you talk about huge his free throw alone right now can cut this thing down to a four point game and does now when you don't shoot well which this team doesn't if you can drive and get your one shooter keeper involved or create an easier goal, then he got something going, but they struggle from 15. And now Penn State has seen Marquette get right back in the thick of things as we are three minutes into this half. 17 left to go. A Macy strong move, but McCaskill blocked it. And the Golden Eagles cut it to a deuce. Or one. Kept alive by Crawford. He'll lean, and his fade won't go, but the tip-in does by Peeper. Oh, what activity. And Amici, you're right, not reacting very well. He should have had that rebound. Peeper's first two-point field goal of the night, and he makes it a two-point field goal game. 37-35. Penn State led by 16 in the first half, by eight at halftime. And they've been looking to go inside, and Earl has been subdued somewhat. Stripped, stolen away. Penn State another turnover. Chance for a tie. And Walker fouled. I think he walked through there. They did get it. He sort of jumped, hop, Brad. Now this is just great basketball. You mentioned that spin out by Amici, and that turns the other way. And 
Crawford gets it up there soft enough, and Peeper, who's been damaging Penn State from deep, gets in close. You can't let a 6-3 guy kill you down there off the glass on a stick back. So the walk on Marquette erases an opportunity to tie the game. Now this is, they just have that little screen diagonally to get a Meiji to the block, and there they go. Nice little high-low. Well, he set himself up well. He got hammered by Abraham, who picks up his third foul. But you talk about a Meiji setting somebody up with that big body and then getting the lob down low. Oh, this is a little bit of a wrinkle. They came from the baseline. Now they go to the foul line to dump down, and you're right. Look at him ward people off. And the attention getter. Like a subway at rush hour here in New York when he gets it. <laughs> he took about 250 of those pounds and leaned outside, took the other 20 toward the hoop to get the pass, but he missed the free throw. I know I know you're not used to this many people when you travel down there in Atlanta. No. But it was embarrassing to see what's your guardian angel at <laughs> the subway. <laughs> Amici got the second. <laughs> it's a three-point game. Getting tight with 1549 to go. <laughs> Look inside today's PCs. You'll find something pretty amazing. The Intel Pentium processor. It gives PC software more life, more action, more energy. So if you want your PC software to really move, make sure your PC has the Intel Pentium processor. We could make our new jet ski watercraft perform like everybody else's, but first, we'd have to slow it down. The new 900 CXI. Watercraft World's Watercraft of the Year. Hey, baby, let's find out what the pros think of the new Adidas basketball shoes. First up is the real high riser, Stacy Orton. Well, Dick. So I'm Jam Bam, baby, and over here is T.T. Beard, that lift shrimp. They really helped me. They helped you shoot the rock. And here's Diaper Dandy, Jalen Rose, and his fast break low. Well, I and think finally, they here's the human eraser, the Kemi Matembo. They're very light, and they look good on my feet. He's 7'2". He could talk as long as he wants. Genuine Jackie. Genuine. Real quality. Genuine Real fit. No wonder Genuine. guys feel comfortable with Jackie. Genuine people. Genuine Jackie. Genuine. Genuine. 38-35. Penn State's lead has been cut down to three with 15.49 left. With Bill Raftery, I'm Brad Nessler from Madison Square Garden. The MIT second semifinal. If you missed the first game, Virginia Tech's Hokies are in the championship game Wednesday night by virtue of a 71-59 win earlier. And that's Matt Gaudio. You say Gaudio, I say Gaudio. <laughs> and the great news about him, he had to sit out because of a back operation, a laminectomy. And technically, I guess that's his title. Student assistant. He's going to yeah. play next year. Right. He's going to come back and play, and they're appealing for another year. So he might get to hold his doctor before he finishes. <laughs> So a great competitor. Look at this penetration. Hutchins, great penetration, but Abraham didn't finish it off. And now Mike Dean is saying, are you kidding me? No foul call there either. On the other end, Earl picks up an offensive foul. And that's one of the few mistakes he has made all evening long. And part of the reason Peeper this half has been solid against him. He got an open run there, and the step-up defense negated the effort. The push, both ends. And it's amazing how they've gotten to understand things aren't working. Let's go with the bounce. I might have, might have bought Mike Dean's complaint on that instance, too. That three-pointer goes by Hutchins, and we're tied. The hard part of being a new coach is you just don't know your people. They found out about Hutchins. He's been terrific, and here the press works. Marquette has it led since it was 4-2. They lead now. Nowhere have come the Golden Eagles of Marquette. They claw their way back in, don't they? Claw well, is a great word. That's how they did it. And it's not pretty. Amici snaps. No, they got a power charge. Yep. 
charge on him. H.E. his third. Now, I know he has seen people do these things to him, but he's reacting because he didn't have a good first half. Looks like he's trying to do it all in a hurry. Almost a spitting image. We were talking about going nine and a half minutes without a field goal against St. Bonaventure and then going 17 to three in the next stretch to win. It's almost exactly what they've done here to take the lead. 40-38 Marquette. They take a respite, don't they? Oh, man. Periodically. They take a nap. But when they wake up, look out. Keeper. He ran out of room down there as Amechi stepped in. Masicki will check in, and Donovan Williams goes out for Penn State. And Earl quickly twice now. He got it right out of that ideal trapping situation. Got the ball in the middle of the floor. Not getting those outside jumpers, as Rack mentioned, that he got in the first half. Nice feed inside, Amechi. He'll always have that one. And that was Carlton's look that got the easy one for John Amechi. That's one of the few times they reversed the ball, Brad, and got him coming to it. Three-pointer. Go! <laughs> Hutchins! Dynamite in a goal, number 12. What a foul on Tony Miller. Quiets the crowd. The lead for Marquette up to three. Uh, you mentioned the ability to hold off in the low box. Uh, they got him down on this side, got a wing, and then got a high low. But as the ball is reversed, great step to the ball. I mentioned the foot speed. He was held up quite a bit, but forceful nevertheless. 43-40. Marquette now in front with 13 and a half to go. Lasicki missed the three. Abraham and Williams. Go hard trying for the rebound. Would you call that aggressive? Throwing those guns around that you referred to earlier in the game? Oh, that a small train wreck. Lasicki will inbound. And a good little move here. Give her all a blow. Oop, thrown away by Bartram. Now you got to hustle back. Oh, and a block. Carlton came out of nowhere to swat that one away. Keeper, three. Got it. And Williams just not quick enough on the rotation to get out on him. Boy, if they gotten involved. Now you got to wonder if Bruce Parco can wait for a TV timeout. No, he's not. Nope, he can't. Timeout, Penn State. Their 16-point first half lead, their eight-point intermission lead has gone by the boards. They're trailing by six. Marquette, 46. Penn State, 40. Just under 13 to go. Mr. Holmes forgets, George didn't fight me. McCall versus Holmes for the heavyweight championship from Caesars Palace, Saturday, April 8th, live on pay-per-view. That's two heavyweight title fights, plus two other championships. Call your cable company. too often uh, we sure don't do that by design and uh, it's been it's really been incredible though because you really have to be mentally tough to make the kind of comebacks that the guys have made uh, and to do it in succession too 
Well, they were down 20 to Miami and came back and won. Trailed Nebraska by a dozen and won it. Trailed by 13 to Iowa and won at the buzzer on a three-pointer. They even beat Minnesota in their final regular season game of the year in a comeback. And now, after having a comfortable first-half lead, Bruce Parkhill's team is going to have to go to the well because they're down here and they're down on the floor again with another turnover. Beaver got his own miss. Oh. Playing up above the rim, and Joseph picks up a foul. Are they getting after it? Uh, you mentioned Miller coming up, but what balance to stay upright. You know, since Mike Dean had a technical call on him at the 19-12 mark, and only one of the free throws went for Penn State, it's been Marquette like 24 to 26 to 4 since. The, the players get some religion, Ooh, huh? I guess so. <laughs> Eford's got eight. Uh, two pretty good program builders here, these coaches. And good composure on the sideline, you notice? Yeah. Even though the T probably just referred to... That yeah, was a calm T, though. Some history, some background as Penn State representing the Big Ten. Used to some physical type of basketball. Penn State in the semifinals for the second time in five years. They lost the champion Vanderbilt back in 90 here at Madison Square Garden. They got to get it over the timeline. Nice they play. They do, and now they might have a two-on-one. But Carlton couldn't handle the pass. And they're swarming right now, <laughs> the Nittany Lions. They're all over. Oseki. Hughes. That's his game. Great. Rotation on his shot. He's picture perfect. Nice get back by Danny Earl. Gets it back to a five-point ball game. Tough match with the dribble. Bill Williams at a disadvantage. They clear his side here. Efer against Williams. He wins the speed match. He might have got shoved a little bit at the end of his shot. No foul call. Penn State pulls off the rebound. Earl. Lasicki, another one. This one's too strong. And Joseph picks up the foul as he was battling Peeper for the rebound. Now, Danny Earl just hesitated because he thought his ball fake would work. Lasicki was set, and it just threw him off a little when he got it late. Hasn't made very many mistakes. Meiji, a quiet six-point night for him. And here comes Tony Miller, bringing it up slowly with 11.43, and Marquette up by five. I thought they were going to try to dribble drive again with Ephraim. Oh, and he wants it. Ephraim squares and delivers. He's home. Big time opportunity. What a knockdown. And it matches the biggest lead. Up eight. The Golden Eagles of Marquette. 51-43. And you can almost see Eford figuring, I got some advantage here. And Williams not able to get out of the shot that time. Masicki packs it into Amici. And Amici's got a chance for a good old-fashioned three-pointer. One of the few times I've been able to get through before the double arrives. McCaskill picks up the foul. John will go to the free throw line. Everything congested. You mentioned swarming before. The entry pass, you see, it never got the hand up on the denial. A little bit too easy of a catch, and then the quickness of a big gentleman. And a first-team academic All-American to go with a big basketball body. Free throw comes off. There's only two out of five for the strike tonight. Uh, Eford really salivating with this matchup. Amici with a rebound. Approaching the midway point of the second half. Dan Earl can held without a field goal this half for Penn State. Carlton will not a pick. A little bit short. Tony Miller on the run of the rebound. Keeper on the flank for three. Rattled out on it. And that he, could have been a killer. He flared out. That was a good decision by Keeper and a terrific give back. And that could have put them in deep trouble. Penn State. Earl trying to use Williams as a screen to get a shot away. And he'll take it. He got it. He has not been able to get the opportunities. 
Nice step back and a quick release. Yes, this is why we came here, Raph. Three-point game with 10 to go. Earl with his fifth three. Keeper is six out of eight from three-point land. Rebound of Mechie. Off a of Miller miss. Penn State can get within one. A three-pointer and we're deadlocked. Here it goes. There it goes. And just a little bump as Bill Williams has to be taken out. He's been inhaling a little extra hard, but just a nice bump and a square up. Don't waste any time. Two teams that have thrived, it seems, in the three NIT games to get to the Garden. Both have been behind big time, and now we're even. 51-51. Double because Williams can't get out there. Eifert got a three. Good call. Mike Dean. Earl got to pack it into a mate. He'll bring it back on top. He's got five three-pointers tonight. Looking for a pick. Can't get a shot away. Lasicki's not bashful about putting it up. He's doubled. Good pass. Eight on the shot clock. Amici strong. Working for his own rebound. Williams, and he scores. And he has been dying to get out of the game, but he has not stopped playing. Good job by Phil. Phil's hopping. He's puffing a little bit, and he's trying to guard one of the top scorers on Marquette's team. And now we've got to stop in the action as Lasicki will pick up a foul. And Phil may go over and caress him just for stopping the action, <laughs> so he can get to the pines. He'd give anything to see 26 more seconds tick off and have a TV timeout. Here he comes. Get the wheelbarrow. Help him to the sideline, but uh, not stopping the effort. And he has been one of the reasons for this comeback. Taking up some area. The only difficulty occasionally on Eford getting out on him. And now stepping up. Tony Miller to the free throw line. Boy, this has turned into something in the second half. Seesawing back and forth. Penn State by eight at halftime. A moment ago it was 51-43. Marquette by eight. Now they missed the free throw. In a one-point game. And Beeper got that rebound earlier there. You mentioned six foot three in. And he got a major. He just in frustration. Whacked the basketball out of bounds. Keeper leads Marquette with 20. And Crawford outside, and they switch the pin on him. He can make that shot. I thought he was going to drag Amici out with him. Hutchins and Peeper are the guys you got to worry about from the outside, it appears right now for Marquette. Nice entry pass. Here's Peeper all alone. Hello. Well, Penn State's got to check their Peeper. Can't leave alone. Seven of nine outside the arc. 57-53. Marquette back in front by four. Use the bounce to get himself into position. Carlton didn't want the three. A mate will take it inside, and he might end up with a three. He can wear on you, can he? Good, strong move, and nobody's scraping. You've got to help your big guy. McCaskill's all alone, hung out right here. And nobody digging down on that dribble. You got to come diving in and get after the basketball. Don't let him have that little kiss opportunity. Back in is Abraham. And McCaskill will sit. And Machi's kind of like a guy that's a boxer that just keeps going to the body all night. And all of a sudden, the other guy realizes his lungs are about ready to collapse. <laughs> He's a 15 rounder, huh? No more 12 or 10s. We got a 15 rounder going here. 741 left. Marquette 57, Penn State 56. Don't go away. Don't you wish driving was this comfortable? And now it can be at Dick Milham Chevrolet Geo. It's time for our conversion van extravaganza. Check this stuff out. TV, VCR, comfortable plush seats. Is this stuff cool or what? Not to mention, bigger than my first apartment. Choose from our huge inventory of over 55 available conversion vans, starting at only $16,999. There's plenty more outside. Come in and experience the conversion van extravaganza only at Dick Milham Chevrolet Geo, East Broad Street in Bethlehem.
of the reasons more people use Cellular One than any other brand of cellular service is because Cellular One is remarkably clear. So clear, in fact, that we're actually recording this commercial on it. Cellular One, the nation's number one cellular service, clear across America. Helen Simpkins to the prom. There she was, adoring you, ignoring him, and you blew it. She went on to fame and fortune, and you, well, you know where you are. Don't blow it again. Huge things are happening right now, like March on ESPN2. You'll get great America's Cup coverage, NHL hockey, and talk to with Jim Rome. I am a positive influence on our nation's youth. This time, get what you want. ESPN2 in March. Contact your cable operator and demand ESPN2, or end up sad and alone. Marquette 57 56 with 741 left in this semifinal matchup. The winner will go on to meet the Hokies of Virginia Tech. And that championship game is Wednesday night, 8 30, here on ESPN. We hope you join us. Raft and I'll be right back here in the garden. And if that championship gives us what this semifinal has in the last 15 minutes or so, it ought to be fun. Boy, this one is seesawed back and forth. Again, if you just joined us, Penn State led by 16 in the first half and by 8 at halftime. And that 8-0 run by Marquette is the reason it was single digits at the break. And subsequently, the Golden Eagles have led by as many as 8 in this half. And Brad, what Penn State has to do is stop the dribble penetration, obviously stay up on paper here, and keep wearing the interior people down with going to a Meiji, letting him be very selective, take good shots, or kick it back out. Here's the penetration. They didn't stop Hutchins. They'll lose if they don't stop it. Hutchins with a dozen off the bench. Williams slows things down. Almost threw it away. Tough catch by Carl. Nice little show. Masicki just standing still waiting for a three, but it's a Meiji inside who will go to the free throw line. So he almost punishes your will, weakens it. Uh, they're getting the pass in because they're not in position. They're, they're making that entry pass in any, any spot they want. You've got a three-quarter, make them work. And like right here, he just steps behind and gets locked. Of course, the ball was thrown to the baseline side. Great selection of a pass. And that big body just keeps banging away at you. Free throw goes. Well, Piccadilly's loss, huh? <laughs> Penn State's game. They played basketball only seven years. Done a good job in those seven years to get to the level he is. That one free throw has his team within a deuce. Around a pick is Hutchins. Lasicki trying to stay with him and can't. Oh. Are we seeing some three-point shooting tonight? Looking on with disdain as he peeked over his shoulder. 14 threes for Marquette. Did I say a little while ago they couldn't shoot free throws, but they could shoot threes? You did. Wow. A nice little taking advantage of size here. Rakunda backs out. Ran into some trouble at the free throw line. It's a five-point Marquette lead. Earl, one three this half, five for the game. Amechi's what they're using, though, and it's working pretty well. Pace, huh? Keeps at you. Very demanding with that body, and he, it was just a broken play, and he made it work. Now it's got 14 now. Golden Eagles of Marquette looking for their 21st win, leading by three, and we're under six minutes. With a stack pop outs. Meminger, who was a great Marquette player on their last NIT championship team, has been standing behind the bench all night as they brought him back for a little dose of yesteryear, and he hasn't sat down the whole game, I don't think. Well, what a major movement. Well, you talk about bouncing to ecstasy. I thought Earl was in great position. If he hadn't reached in and just held his ground, he may have drawn the charge. And watch Mikey, give me five, give me five, give me five. <laughs> I know I don't put you in, but give me five. <laughs> he is so colorful. The man needs help. <laughs> Tony Miller makes it a three-point play and makes it a six-point Marquette lead.
backcourt heat on the Lions of State College who are in trouble after having it all their way in the first half. And Marquette, the, the defense has been terrific. Other than Amici banging them down low, they've taken away these outside attempts. Earl tried to get it inside, and Miller stole it. And came out of the pile to draw the foul. They've been seconded down in that trap. Tony Miller's looked like a seasoned senior out of Cleveland that he is in this last 10-minute stretch, hasn't he? St. Joe's, you know what high school that is? Special K. Clark Kellogg. That's right, our guy. Yeah. And he has been terrific. What'd you say, 940 some odd coming into this game? Assists? 942 assists coming in, which is sixth all time in the NCAA annals. Behind the, the Hurleys and the Corchianis and those guys. 1,000 points, 500 rebounds. I'd say he, not bad, deserved the scholarship. And almost got his own rebound. There comes out to Crawford. Fresh 35 and down to 5. 66 59. Marquette now in command. Can they stay there? That's the question. That's what both teams have been wondering. This should be on McCaskill. Now, watch. They get it right. Not good basketball. He's bodying Amici out at the foul line. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You're going to get an empty trip, put them on the foul line, stop the clock. Not much good out of that whole sequence. And Amici's not going to kill you as far as on the offensive end from that part of the floor anyway. He likes it a little bit lower. Now he'll get that free throw line. Free. Abraham in. And McCaskill will go out for four finals. This is a chastisement substitute. This yeah. is when you get the iron going. Amici missed the free throw, though. Miller and Hutch, two lightning quick guards on the floor for Marquette. Well, they got it on the string, these two, and they're free. Mike Dean gives them the green light. Any opportunity, take it. little avenue we found. I didn't think there was any room there. Knocked away by Amici. He is clever and comfortable in traffic, too. Neither of those guys are the biggest guards in the world, either. Tony Miller's listed at 5'11", and Hutchins listed at 5'9". <laughs> with the catch out court with Lissicki on it. Quick, though, with a pass to Crawford. Peepers foul. And that's one they really didn't need. They got a new shot clock to come out and got a nice feeling. Unfortunately, they get to the line, and you like the aggression, particularly from a guy that can shoot three. Now you got your defense thinking a little bit. Now, some of the tattoos on guys, you think their roommates gave them, huh? Now look at Peeper probably go. This was a dollar and a half, I think, right. on the left shoulder practicing or playing his trade. Eight point lead matches the largest. It can go to nine and does for Peeper. Peeper's got a career high. 25 points. His previous best was 24 against St. Bonaventure. 25 tonight. Well, they got a jump ball and a possession error with Marquette. The pressure has really thrown off Penn State. The half court's been sound, but the pressure just confusing and disrupting it puts a little bit or Bruce a little bit frustrated because he felt this should have been a foul and I thought it was a play on more than a jump ball that was a quick little two and they get a T now on Bruce Markell same official made both technical calls my kids on the Erie tonight get him a severe Maybe didn't sleep well last night <laughs> <laughs> Mark Hill with a T at the 416 mark See if it helps his team. It certainly helped Mike Dean's earlier. But Peeper with a career high night. And he misses. Well, when you get one call at this point in the game, you're so relieved when a youngster misses a free throw. So it takes you off the hook a little bit. You figure it can't be any worse than a three point situation. And he missed them both. So maybe it won't even be that bad. Possession, though, with Marquette. Mm -hmm. No damage done yet. Off the technical on Bruce Park Hill. He's a relatively mild-mannered guy. Gentle. I mean that that shirt stays 
well ironed during the course of the game, huh? <laughs> now, he's not a Gary Williams kind of guy. No. Cool hand. Gary's going to be sending me bad mail. I've been burning on him all year about going through the shirts during the game. Well, he does get into the game. I'll say that for him. Bundle of emotions. Under four to go. Marquette Hutchins, quick move to the hoop. Wow. 17 for the little guy. Well, the guy guarding him has some difficulty. Where is the pinch guy? Support. You can't let guys turn the corner like that or that easily. Raft Hutchins had two points at halftime. He's got 17 with three and a half to go. And how about the coach for putting them in right at the beginning of the half, too? And put the best five on the floor. Nice defense this time. Denial by Abraham. Amici may be a little tired. Didn't come to the ball very well to catch that thing. Another Penn State turnover. And Marquette now in command. 3.20 left. Their fans starting to make a little noise at the Garden. Penn State with 20 turnovers. And Marquette has turned this whole game around. Much like they turned their season around. This is an amazing a comeback as the Penn State Miami game that I did at Penn State when they were down 20 and came from dead in the water to win. And now it's getting worse. Crawford, as if they needed somebody else to hit outside. Well, he's a terrific outside shooter. The baseball player can stroke him from deep. 14 point lead now. Marquette has just lit it from outside the arc. They might want to play their home games in the garden. <laughs> and the only force Penn State to use a lot of time on offense, too to their benefit. Lasicki will try to answer. His three rattles out. Carl, boy, he plays hard all the time. It's his first field goal of this half. Fingertip control. Great tip. Timeout with two and a half to go. But it's enough to make a call coach cry when all of a sudden your lead has become a 12-point deficit. Friends and Family Worldwide gives you the lowest international rates to everyone you choose. In every country, every single day of the year. And with Friends and Family Worldwide, you always save over AT&T's best plan. For the easiest way on earth to get unlimited savings, join MCI's Friends and Family Worldwide. Punch the clock, I'm a working machine. I got boots to do the job, got my Wolverines. I can take a wild jack and a river miles up in the state. I can work like hell, never get the blue. Cause I feel like heaven in my Wolverine boots. Wolverine doing shots, guaranteed comfort for your money back. Work like hell, feel like heaven. Wolverine doing shots, made in the USA. There are a lot of reasons we created Ford Windstar with more passenger and cargo room than any leading minivan. A lot of reasons we gave Windstar the widest stance for secure handling. And reasons we gave it over 40 standard safety features. And even went so far as to include 24-hour roadside assistance. We'd be glad to name all the reasons, but you've already named them. Ford Windstar. Created for the most important people in the world. Could we possibly have an end to the Major League Baseball strike? The owners have a new proposal that moves a little bit towards the union. This year, they're saying they'll go back to the old system, then a new system starting in 1996. Sports Center will have a full details, so tune in following the game. Back to Madison Square Garden. All right, John. Some teams might want to go to Marquette's system. They were dead in the water in this game before halftime, went on an 8-0 run to end the first half, and look what they've done. So basically, they've outscored Penn State in the last... Um, 18 minutes, about uh, 28, uh, by, by about 28 points. So look at the three-point shooting. Nine of 11 in the second half. At 15 for 22 overall, they <laughs> shoot, what, 36% for the game. And these aren't replacement three-point shooters no, these like are baseball not. has. <laughs> They're the same guys. Man wide open under the hoop is Abraham. Uh, you gamble, but you got to have a valve safety back there. It's like pulling your goalie. 14-point mm -hmm. ball game. Time running out on Penn State's hope for an NIT title. Peace. And a foul. On Abraham, I believe, or Peeper, both there. And you'll, you'll, you're right when you talk about the three-point shots, but I'm just so impressed with the defense. They've gotten a lot of stuff out of it, and here's how they handle the pressure as well. And nobody back, and... Uh, 
No mountain too high for Abraham, huh? Yes, not. Amici. 11 points on the half, 14 for the game. Now, Faisal's done a nice job down on the box defensively, too. Yes. John got them both. Now, this is where they need some defense state, but make now Amici is back. Oh, they almost come up with it. Lusicki gets the little reach in from the rear. Nice looking player, though. It's four on Lusicki. And now Peeper will walk up. He missed his last two, but he hasn't missed much else tonight. And 75 percent for the year, too, so you expect him to knock him down. A 25 point career high night so far for Anthony Peeper. Got that one. He had a 24.9 rebound game and the win over St. Bonaventure. So this is not the first time he's had a huge NIT game to get here. I bet Mom was glad to see that. Mom might have to put another one on the other arm. They can win on Wednesday night. Uh, if you can shoot like that, you should try the other arm as maybe, well. Maybe a little apple, huh? <laughs> be a nice tattoo. Earl leans in, trying to draw the foul, did. And Hutchins will pick it up. Well, Hutchins and Miller have uh, dealt the knockout blows with their dribble penetration if Marquette's to hang in. And tonight, Tony Miller tied Mandy Johnson's most games played record. Mandy, a kid out of St. Anthony's, Jersey City. Keep bringing that name up. 122 huh? career games. Not bad, huh? Not at all. It looks like he'll play on in the championship round. Barring Penn State, so if they can pull off a miracle comeback. Nate Althaus is going to check in. Good buddies with John Amici. And he's kind of the cheerleader spark plug that was so animated in the game we did up at Penn State as they came from behind to uh, beat Miami. And he was smart enough to be walking down Times Square with Amici. You pick good friends, big friends when you walk the city streets, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. You want to get back unscathed. I always thought it was safe to walk around with you, and then I realized that we're on the wrong side of the river for you to be a big star over here, I guess. I tried to wash your window. 77-66. <laughs> Stop the clock. The little reach in by Bartram. Bartram had one to give. Just about two minutes away from Sports Center. Coming up next, more on the baseball talks and the possibility. We hope that uh, we'll see some regulation baseball. Spurs and the Pistons. Some NFL moves. Frank Reich became a millionaire today, courtesy of the Carolina Panthers. Sports Center is next, so stay tuned. Be hard to pick a MVP if you picked one in this game because Peeper's been huge. But this little guy that's stepping up, man, 17 on the night. Uh, I would opt for him because he's broken down the defense along with his partner, Tony Miller. And you, you can see how this team has improved because of what they do on the defensive end. And the, the other side, if you, you can have a bad shooting team or a bad shooting evening, or in their, their case, they have spurts of bad shooting. Right. Then they counter with some good shooting. But the defense is a constant. You can see where they can hang around. That's been the key. Hold the opposition under that 40% mark and then just lace up your shoes and hope you can get back in it. And they've done that tonight. Nice check out. Great rebound with Amici draped all over him. Abraham pulls down a tough one. And he's to be commended, too. I mean, that, that is not easy to contest and keep the big guy off the glass to all game. And uh, fatigue not being a factor. Lasicki. He can hit the threes, too. That's his third this half. Still a long way to go, though. Kind of a short time to get there. Peeper fouled by Lasicki, and that's it for Pete, I believe. If it is, his three-point shooting is lost to the team. And uh, Bruce, uh, just say, no, no, not you. You don't want to lose one of your top outside threats. Well, at least they can compliment him with Bartram. Though. It's not like you were going to a non-factor in that jump shooting category. Nice looking prospect, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Out of Whitehall, Pennsylvania. Maybe the best pure shooter Penn State's had in quite a while. 
Tom Hovass back in the uh, 80s is really generally considered maybe the best guy to shoot for Penn State. Keeper, I don't know how he misses free throws because he doesn't miss from about 20 away. Well, you mentioned Tom Hovass or Hovassi. He played for the Hawks this year, started the season, had been in Europe all those years. Pretty good performer. Earl, way out. Rebounds to Tunda goes up and he drew a foul. And Keeper. This is Mike Dean screaming. What are you fouling for? We only got 119 left and we'll get out of here. That's what remains in this second semifinal matchup. Again, Virginia Tech awaits. The Hokies of Blacksburg are in the championship game courtesy of a 71. 59 win over Canisius in our first game tonight. Now, on, earlier we talked about the 25th anniversary of Marquette's win. Al McGuire was the coach. And that's the year I think they turned down the NCAA. And then won the NIT. And then the rule was put in that you have to go and invite it. So Al's a rule change here. Isn't he always oh, been? Yeah, <laughs> no, he's a rule violator. <laughs> that's it. I knew it had something to do with the rules. Bendy. Secunda, that's his first point this half. He is just not been the score for Penn State in the NIT that he was in the regular season. They get the little foot speed situational changes. Don't you feel like you're doing an NFL game now? Exactly. Substitution, situational substitutions. Seven point ball game. Got a foul. Looking for somebody that's the right guy to follow. That might not be too easy. Hutchins isn't the man. Stripped away. Bartram thought that he had knocked it off Miller, but no. And alongside with Jerry Dunn, longtime assistant, uh, they're trying to steal us. Well, even though our first game ended up being a 12-point difference, there was all of a sudden some question as Canisius wouldn't quit and cut it down to seven late in that game. And now this one has been cut to seven as well. All house with the foul. What is he get after, huh? Yep. A form of intensity packaged and controlled. Tony Miller will walk up to the free throw line. He thought he should have had that steal. He's amazing. A lot of substitutions going on with 108 left. And Miller, who struggles at that free throw line, you've got to make him if you're going to walk out of here. 58% of the year, 50% tonight. Ooh, got a bounce there. Mm. Fortuitous. Second team, great Midwest Conference performer. There's his numbers tonight. So he's up to 950 career assists, but he missed the second free throw. Ooh, and he's hurt. Well, that touch is stupid. Bartram takes the three. Got it off the glass. Ho oh -ho! Down to five. Look out. Peeper hammered by a major. Well, there was no question that Peeper was going to the goal. Well, we talked about kisses that uh, will send you off with a smile. That is incredible. Red Arback used to say, Clinics, your best friend is the glass. <laughs> it certainly was the case. <laughs> and right here, not getting much time to set. Keeper <laughs> rips that one after having missed his last couple. There's his free throws tonight. And on the season, he's probably a little bit tired from the line from shooting all the threes he's put up. Career high night for Peeper. He adds to it. 29 for Anthony Peeper. The lead is seven. Time running out on Penn State. Earl on the drive. And he's got a chance for a three-point play. And why would you foul? I mean, you just give him the deuce. You don't want to give him a chance for three. Well, they made a few mistakes here. And right here, watch Crawford with the step in. And maybe your big guy can bail you out, but don't put him at the line. Everything went right for Dan Earl on that. He was fouled. He threw it up. The thing was partially blocked and went off the glass. And in. I mean, talk about living right. I thought he had a nice little English on the kiss. He had enough. That's yeah, for sure. He sure did. 
little Willie Moscone job. <laughs> Four point game, 41 to go. And they got the hole before the ball or as the ball is inbounded. And Williams. Yep. This could yet be a very crazy finish. It was a 14 point Marquette lead, 73 59. Now it's 81 77. So much for the low scoring game we sort of anticipated in this thing. And so much for the unsoiled shirt. I think he's <laughs> over the limit. And Will Gates and the rest of the Marquette club trying to keep those hoop dreams alive and hoping for a championship matchup with Virginia Tech Wednesday night. If they, they were able to win this and the tournament, there might be a sequel to that movie. Yeah, huh? no kid. An addendum. Hoop dreams too. And this is almost like a free timeout. Hold oh, checks back in. Yeah, not quite yet, I guess. Well, this is quite a drill going on. We got people yeah. all over the place. Talk about Willie Moscone. Looks like he just broke everybody here on the floor. Nice break. I don't know where they're all going to. I mean, it, it's it, everybody's looking one way, running the other. Well, I, I don't think the ball hadn't come in bound, so Ballhouse couldn't go out on the same play. They were calling the ball out of bounds before it was passed in. You follow? Yep. So he has to stay on the floor until the clock takes. Take time off the yeah. clock, right? Here's Peeper. Oh, big miss. He's got to stay on the line. Yeah, when he stays on the line, he's been pretty effective, but he's either leaning in or leaning out quite a bit tonight, and he has missed. Five free throws and made six. The strategy of Bruce Parkhill stopping the clock, lengthening the game to perfection, particularly if you don't make these. Got a roll there. 30 for Peeper. But it's a five-point game. Two possessions Penn State needs. Let's see what they go for on the opener. Earl stripped on the way to the hoop by Hutchins. I tell you, it's amazing. Why are you going to foul? I mean, if he makes the shot, you don't want to chance the three. <laughs> that's why that's gray over there. Penn State's made eight free throws in a row when they needed them the most. Here's a couple more that they need. Oof. That one had to roll around to the side, too. They were commenting on the comeback by... Marquette, how about right now what Bruce's guys are doing? I mean, superb. Great game management right now. They look totally out of it at 73-59. And now they're right there. 82-79. A three-pointer separates these two teams. Half a minute to go. Hutchins, nice move to get it to Miller. And now Peeper. I thought he was going to shoot that. Oh, I, I did too. And then the foul late. And they're trying to stop the clock. Nate Ballhouse, he understands. What a game by Marquette and Penn State. They've given us a little bit of everything. <laughs> Seesaw, back and forth, both teams have had what looked like insurmountable leads at one time or another. Penn State led by 16 in the first half. Marquette led by 14 in this half. It's Marquette by three, and this is a huge set of free throws coming up. And now you say, as you said, standing still, he's their best free throw shooter. He's getting all the opportunities, too, at 75%. 31 points, Anthony Peeper. If this one goes, it might be all she wrote for Penn State, though we do have almost 24 seconds left. It's a five-point ball game. Still need two possessions if you're a Nittany Lion fan, and you got to hustle. Earl will bring it. Let's see if he takes a three. Leaves it off for Secunda, who'll take it instead. A little too strong. Crawford the rebound. And the lights are starting to dim on the Big Ten and on the Nittany Lions. It's 84-79 with 12.4 to go. I, I think Earl, the idea of going to the goal was so good to them. Why not one more time? Maybe the way they're fouling, he might get the three. And at that point in the game, about 16 to go, you could still stop the clock, give one. Altas showing the frustration of Penn State. Now that's a competitor, that kid, huh? 
I want him in my weight room, I think, <laughs> as a spotter. I'll tell you, this is the kind of guy you get. You, you walk into the Marines, and that's your drill instructor. You're in deep trouble. <laughs> that's it's right. going to be a long boot camp. Can I still <laughs> scratch my name off and go home? He said, that's the truth. Crawford got them both. That should just about do it. And while Penn State fought valiantly to get back in this game, they're down seven with less than 10 seconds to go. And Secundo will launch a three. And it rattled out, and so do the hopes of the Nittany Lions, because Marquette's going to the championship game on Wednesday night. And they're starting to celebrate a little bit, and rightfully so. Virginia Tech and Marquette played in the regular season, remember? And Virginia Tech won that one. Now, what a way to start a job, huh? Three-point Virginia Tech win in that one. And Watlington at 17, and Watlington was, we thought, Mr. Three-Pointer on the night until we saw Anthony Pieper and Dan Earl and Aaron Hutchins in this game. And I just think Pieper was trying to show Frank Secker that he could do it in this <laughs> building, too. Well, Peeper was the man, 32, career high. A disappointed group of Penn State performers, and the loss sets in. It's a terrible feeling, as we both know. What a great what season they had, oh, though. It shouldn't be wasted. Tomorrow, get the to down, back up, prepare for the consolation game. They'll play in the consolation, will Penn State, but Mike Dean who last year had his Siena club in the semifinals and had to sat, settle for third place. This year, he'll be in the championship with the Golden Eagles of Marquette, who advanced 87 to 79, the final score. And so your matchup for Wednesday night at 8.30, here it is, the Hokies of Virginia Tech out of the Metro and heading to the Atlantic 10, Marquette out of the great Midwest. And that's your matchup. The Golden Eagles and the Hokies will square off on Wednesday night, 8.30 is game time. We hope you join us for that one. That's going to wrap it up. Virginia Tech and Marquette advance, and Marquette does so 87-79. For Bill Raftery and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Brad Nessler. Thanks for watching. We'll see you now Wednesday night. Be here, 8.30. Virginia Tech and Marquette will crown an NIT champ on Wednesday. See